This is just stupid. A young man volunteered to bury himself alive for the purpose of money rituals and everything that could go wrong went wrong. Earlier this month in October of 2024, the story of a young man named Chikwado Eze went viral. And according to the story, it was said that Chikwado had recently gotten a visa to travel abroad for greener pasture. Few days before his flight, he decided to visit his village in Enugu Ezike to meet his father for help. In his journey to greener pasture outside the country, he really wanted to be certain. He really wanted the confidence that whatever he was going to do out there would be successful. So he thought that the best thing to do was to be fortified, washed, and blessed by the gods of the land. He really wanted to be prosperous in all his dealing when he leaves the country. And so his father was like, say no more. I know the best native doctor for this fortification. That was when his father took him to a specific Chikadibia, a specific native doctor that was going to carry out this ritual for his son. Now, when they got to the native doctor, they were told how the fortification would go. It is believed that this specific kind of ritual requires that the client or the seeker is buried in the ground for over an hour. Sources said it's an hour plus. Another source also claimed it may have been an hour, 30 minutes. And it turned out that this specific ritual, this specific fortification is a popular one in Enugu Ezeke. It's a popular one that many young people do for grace and more blessings. Now, what we don't know is if he was buried in a casket or buried directly in the soil but we know that he was buried in the ground and i want to believe he was buried in a casket because if he was buried directly in the soil it, it may have taken a little longer for the disaster that was about to happen to occur after the native doctor finished doing his incantations chikwado was set to be buried it's not clear how many feet or it's not clear if he was put in a box eventually this young man is put in the ground and buried as intended. After an hour 30 minutes, it was said that he was dug out to complete the final stage of the fortification. Unfortunately for them, when they got to him in the ground, he was unresponsive. He may or may not have been rushed to the hospital, but what was certain was that his pulse was no longer reading, which meant that Chikwado had died from suffocation. All efforts to revive this young man did not seem successful because eventually posters of his obituary began spreading and news started getting around to his friends and people who knew him and this is where a lot of people who were familiar with Chikwado began reacting. It turned out that Chikwado used to stay in Cameroon and he had Nigerian friends and Cameroonian friends in Cameroon who knew of him, who knew the, his, his life in Cameroon and they were surprised that this had happened. Many of his friends in Cameroon were shocked that, ah, wait, I don't understand. Some of them made comments saying that this boy was not set to travel out of the country. He did not get any goddamn visa. That his life was good in Cameroon. That he was living well. That he was comfortable. However, they suspect that due to the fact that he was the first son or only son, he had so much pressure on his shoulders from family back home to do more than he was doing. I guess what they're trying to say is that the boy was always in constant pressure to send money back home to take care of family bills any sibling or relative who needed something they always called him and it was affecting his own personal life and maybe that could have been where the pressure stemmed from to go and fortify himself it could also be pressure from his father because nobody is speaking on his own mentality. Nobody is speaking on whether or not he willingly wanted to do this. Now, this is from the friends in Cameroon. People in Nigeria over here are already of the opinion that he volunteered himself. It was something that he wanted. It was something that he, he asked for. And with the help of his father, he got an opportunity to be fortified. Unfortunately, the sacrifice turned out deadly for him. But there is a chance that he may have gotten the visa to travel abroad but did not tell his friends in Cameroon. That is why many of them are refuting the claim. Many of them are denying that he, he got any damn visa. Many of them are saying that that is not true. 
it is possible Chiquado got it but did not tell them. Whether or not he got it or he did not get it, the biggest question is, did he volunteer to do this? Was he forced to do this? Was he coerced to do this? Was he pressured to do this? People may argue that he's an adult, so the fact that he got to be put in a casket to the point where he's buried in the ground shows that he had some sort of consent. So regardless of whether or not his father forced him or his village people coerced him. Chikwado is a grown man. For you to leave the city, for you to leave Cameroon or leave where you stay, to go to your village, to have you being stripped naked and washed by a native doctor before being put in a box or in a casket, or before even being dropped bare-bodied in the sand to be buried in a shallow grave for over an hour, then there is a possibility that he had a little bit of consent which would mean that he volunteered himself that was why when the police got involved his father and the native doctor were arrested and would be tried for their role they play many of them are saying that the native doctor and the father should be arrested for murder but the thing is there's a faction of people on the internet saying that they should be released because that sacrifice is a common practice amongst certain youths in the community and for a lot of people it has gone well it's just unfortunately that maybe chikodo did not have the ability to hold his breath for over an hour 30 minutes in the grave and i want to believe that he was most likely buried in a casket i don't think he was buried directly in the sand because if it was in a shallow grave, I can imagine him being able to scrape his way out. If it was something around three feet or four feet, he could find a way to get out of it if he was struggling to breathe. But if he was put in a box in a casket, then there is limitation. And I think that is where he will most likely run out of oxygen for a very long time or in a very short amount of time without him being able to know what to do, without him being able to struggle. If he was buried directly on the sand, at least the native doctor and other people standing by for the one hour, hopefully somebody was watching, would see the grave sand moving in a way to show that somebody's trying to come out. Unless that happened and they ignored it. But he was most likely put in a coffin. And I think that is where the horror would have actually begun. Especially if he was claustrophobic because let's face it if this fortification has been working it means that there's a possibility that somebody can be in that casket in a grave for an hour and not die i just ran a quick google search on how many hours of oxygen is available in the grave that is how many hours of oxygen does an average human being have to breathe while trapped in the grave should they be found buried alive and according to google it says it's a little bit over five hours of oxygen five hours now this is where i think we have to talk about the science here if science is saying a human being can last five hours in a grave with the little amount of oxygen that is there then how come chiquado died in less than two hours could it be he was maybe buried really directly on the sand and not in the grave I don't see them burying him directly on the sand because we've already done that imagination. He would find a way to struggle out. So why was his own five hours? Or maybe they used a cheaper casket, <laughs> one of those wooden ones, which I still think he would have been able to break out from. It just depends on so many things. How deep? If it's six feet grave, then he is most likely fucked. If it's a three feet or four foot grave, then I think he does have a chance to fight his way out in a Michael Jackson trailer kind of situation, like a zombie bursting out of the grave kind of uh, thing. But if science is saying an average human being can stay five hours in a casket if they are buried alive, why was Chiquado's case not up to an hour, 30 minutes? I cannot think of anything other than the fact that maybe he panicked after a while and the thing is if you are in a hair tight space and you begin to panic and struggle your five hours can drop down to one hour because now your body is consuming more oxygen if he was most likely relaxed he may have gotten past the one hour 30 minutes and survived like everyone else who may have done it there is a chance he panicked and i think if science is saying five hours is what is available and he did not last up to an hour 30 minutes then i can imagine him struggling out of the grave 
knocking, hitting, crying, and screaming. And all those can actually reduce your long hours down to minutes. And he may have even probably died of panic or died of exhaustion or died of maybe the pressure of the sand if the casket had broken. There's just so many things that could happen. If oxygen stopped flowing into your brain, into your bloodstream, yes, it can lead to shock, I presume, or it can lead to deprivation and then suffocation. And I think that could have been his situation. Chiquado may have been claustrophobic and did not realize it until he got to that situation. Many people who are genuinely claustrophobic, who are afraid of airtight space, will not take this risk. I don't think anybody will. It's usually somebody who has been convinced or pressured or deceived into thinking that uh, men are doing this, you can do this, and then they get into the airtight space and then two, three, four, five minutes, it starts to dawn on them that they are in a grave. It starts to dawn on them that this could all be a trick and a prank for him to be killed and that nobody's going to dig him up after one hour. And then, you know, a lot of things will be running in his head because you need to trust the native doctor. You also need to trust your father. And maybe all the doubts in his mind, everything his father has done as a in his childhood to prove he was unreliable suddenly starts coming in his head and he starts realizing that wait though they say they will dig me out after one hour or maybe he slept hoping that by the time he wakes up it's all over but realizes that he's still there and he's scared that you know his father and the native doctor had probably died up there or they had run away or they have forgotten about him and he starts to panic there are so many scenarios that I could paint that could cause Chiquado to have panicked, to have been hysterical, which may have led him to struggle and fight his way out, which may have reduced his supposedly five hours of oxygen, causing him to lose his life barely one hour, 13 minutes later while in the grave. It's really unfortunate, but at least we know he volunteered himself for this. It's not something he was forced or you know made to do and even if he was forced or made to do it he had the option to say no i mean on the flip side when we hear people want to do rituals to be successful or prosperous they kill innocent people but i mean we gotta give it to chiquado it was himself that he put out there to, for the sacrifice he didn't go around looking for a young girl to be head he didn't go around looking for an 11 years old boy to lure into a hotel and be heard. For those of you who haven't seen our documentary, you can check it out. It's available on our page, the Otokoto documentary about a money ritual case that happened many years ago. So we got to give Chikwado props for not killing anybody else. If people really want to do ritual that bad, this particular ritual, to be fair, I will recommend it. More people should do this type. Put yourself in the casket. Don't put someone else. Don't go and drag someone else's daughter and behead them and cut their private part. Don't go and drag somebody else's 11-year-old son and offer to buy their granite and take them in the hotel and cut their parts and ship it. Don't do that. If these rituals exist, then more people should do it. And that is why I will argue and agree with people who say that the native doctor and the father should be released from prison. I hope they are released. I hope they are allowed to come back home because this is an adult who chose to do this thing to himself so nobody made him do it the native doctor did not leave his shrine to cameroon to drag him to do it and i don't think his father left his house to gandra he was the one who came to the village to offer himself for it and it just turned out terribly you can't just arrest it's like arresting a medical surgeon for a surgery that went wrong and they, and they pass it was a patients that brought themselves to the hospital for the surgery. So the doctor did not go to the house to force the surgery on them. So if we cannot arrest medical doctors or surgeons for surgery that end up killing a victim, then we shouldn't arrest a native doctor for a fortification that ended up ghastly, especially for one that shouldn't have, especially for one that seems safe, especially for one that appears to many people as something that could have been easily successful actually for one sacrifice that many people have done and they've made it out and if they try to put science into it the native doctor and the father would have argued that 
People last five hours there. So they knew in one hour they would bring him out. Unless maybe the investigation is going to go another route of the true intentions of the father and the native doctor. So maybe this was the father deceiving the boy to do it for himself, not knowing that this is the father doing it for his own good. Maybe the father really wanted the son to go so that he can, you know, be the rich man. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I, will, I don't imagine a father would want to do it, especially if there's a visa abroad involved. Maybe the father meant well and really wanted the boy to succeed and thought this was the best. And I can imagine how bad he must have felt or how bad he feels now. But you guys let me know your thoughts. Do you think the native doctor and Chikwado's father should be arrested and remain in prison? Or do you think they should be released? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and check out our channel for more videos that you may have missed. Thank you for watching.